In this video, we'll be starting our discussion on module 6 of C203 Fluid Mechanics 1. This is the syllabus. So, in this video, we'll be discussing boundary layer theory, no slip condition, boundary layer thickness, boundary layer growth over long thin plate, laminar and turbulent boundary layers, laminar sublayer, moment mid-degree equation of boundary layer. And in the coming videos, we'll be discussing the remaining topics. So, what do you mean by boundary layer? Consider a fluid which is flowing with the velocity capital U. And inside this fluid, we are introducing a solid body. In the figure, you can see the velocity is capital U. And here you have a solid body which is introduced in the flow field. Okay. Now, the particles which are very close to the boundary of the solid body will be sticking on to the boundary. Okay, so here you can see the boundary of the solid body and the particles which is which, which are very close or which are, which are very close to the boundary will be sticking on to the solid body. So what will be the velocity of those fluid particles? The velocity of those fluid particles will be same as that of the solid body because they are getting attached to the solid body. The solid body is at rest. So, what will be the velocity of those fluid particles? The velocity will be 0. So, these fluid particles cannot slip away from the boundary. This condition is known as no slip condition. So, uh, in the first layer, you will have the velocity as 0. Now, as you go away from the boundary of the solid body, the velocity of fluid particles will be slowly increasing from zero and at one particular point, it will be attaining the original velocity that is u. So, here in this figure, you can see the velocity distribution at the boundary of the solid body, it is zero and as you go away, the velocity is slowly increasing at one particular point it becomes the original velocity that is u and outside that point it is u itself it is constant okay so we can draw a layer inside which the velocity is less than the capital u less than this velo the original velocity so we can say that inside this layer velocity gradient exits or velocity is changing inside that boundary and outside that boundary velocity is not changing it is u itself okay so this layer which is very close to the solid body boundary is known as boundary layer and the study of flow in that layer is known as boundary layer theory Okay, so hope all of you understood what do you mean by boundary layer. It is a layer of fluid which is very near to the boundary of the solid body. And inside this layer, there will be velocity gradient. Velocity will be changing from 0 to u. At the boundary, it will be 0. At the boundary of the solid body, it will be 0. And as we move away from the solid body, it will be slowly increasing and at one particular point, it will reach u. So, that is boundary layer. I have written the explanation also in the slides. Boundary layer, it is a thin layer of viscous fluid close to the solid surface in contact with a moving stream in which the flow velocity varies from 0 at the wall up to u. Okay. And I have said what is no slip condition also. The layer of fluid which comes in contact with the boundary surface adheres to it on account of viscosity. So, I told you that the fluid particles which are very close to the boundary of the solid body will be sticking on to the solid body. And what is the reason of that? It is due to viscosity. And this layer can't slip away from the surface and those particles will have the same velocity as that of the solid body. Okay, and as I told you, there will be velocity gradient inside the boundary layer. Now, I told you that the original velocity is u. So, this u is known as free stream velocity. Free stream velocity u. Okay, so outside the boundary layer, we have free stream velocity. And inside the boundary layer, the velocity will be increasing from 0 to u. 
and in the previous modules in the first module we have studied that shear stress tau is equal to mu into du by dy du by dy is the velocity gradient so wherever velocity gradient exists shear stress also is there okay so shear stress is equal to mu into what is mu is coefficient of viscosity coefficient of viscosity into velocity gradient is your shear stress so inside boundary layer we can find out shear stress using this equation okay hope boundary layer is clear now we'll discuss certain terms first one is laminar boundary layer okay now consider a thin plate that is introduced to flowing fluid so this is the thin plate and or i'll show you i'll just try to draw a thin plate see this is the thin plate okay and water is flowing in this direction and here the velocity is denoted by u naught okay u naught is the free stream velocity and the boundary layer on one side of this plate will be in this form okay so if i draw over here it will be like this okay so this profile is similar to this now first term that we are going to study is laminar boundary layer so when the plate is introduced this edge is known as leading edge and this edge is known as trailing edge so this laminar boundary layer exists up to a one particular length okay from the leading edge where inside this zone laminar flow exists so this is the leading edge and up to one particular length you will have laminar flow in this region you will have laminar flow and so this zone or this layer is known as laminar boundary layer now how to find out this laminar boundary layer i told you that up to one particular level the flow will be laminar the flow in the boundary layer will be laminar how to find out that particular position the critical value is reynolds number is equal to 5 into 10 base to 5 so if at a section reynolds number becomes 5 into 10 raised to 5 then up to that level the flow will be laminar in the boundary layer okay and the equation of uh, reynolds number is given by re is equal to u into x by nu so here u we all know it is the free stream velocity u or u not u is the free stream velocity x is the distance from the leading edge see i told you that this is the leading edge so this is x this distance is x okay and mu is the kinematic viscosity of the fluid so when this value becomes 5 into 10 raised to 5 then you can expect the end of laminar flow and beyond that point it will not be laminar the flow inside the boundary layer will not be laminar so you can substitute re value in this equation as 5 into 10 raised to 5 and here in this equation uh, u value that is the free stream velocity will be known the property of the fluid kinematic viscosity will also be known so you can find out x or x is the distance up to which laminar boundary layer exist isn't it so uh, you can find out this section or you can find out x from this equation and you can find out this section the section up to which laminar boundary layer exist so basically what is laminar boundary layer it is the length of the plate from the leading edge up to which the laminar flow exist so this is laminar boundary layer this is laminar boundary layer and beyond this level it will not be the flow will not be laminar see you can see the small arrows in this figure see they are parallel to each other nearly parallel to each other so we can expect a laminar flow in this zone okay so that is laminar boundary layer 
now we'll go to the next term next term is turbulent boundary layer see this is another representation of the previous um, figure so here leading edge is marked and see up to point e for a distance a b the zone is laminar okay and we can see in the figure from portion c to d in portion c d the flow is turbulent okay so um, and see here you can see that in the figure turbulent boundary layer is written so from f to g you have the turbulent boundary layer so can you guess what will be the type of flow in the turbulent boundary layer so here the flow will be turbulent and in the figure in between e and f you have something so that zone is known as transition zone the transition from laminar to turbulent occurs so this zone bc is known as the transition zone okay so for a short length flow changes from laminar to turbulent so that zone is known as turbulent sorry that zone is known as transition zone and again if you go downstream the boundary layer thickness increases see you can see the thickness of the boundary layer initially at a the thickness is zero it is just starting so and as we proceed the thickness of the boundary layer is slowly increasing and at um, after this transition zone you have the turbulent zone where the flow is turbulent okay so that is turbulent boundary layer the next term is laminar sublayer see in this figure inside the bound, turbulent boundary layer you can see a small portion where you have laminar sublayer okay so this is a region which is very near to the solid body inside the turbulent boundary layer and he, in this zone the variation of velocity is influenced only by the effects of viscosity and the thickness of laminar sublayer is very small okay so that is laminar sublayer now uh, next term is boundary layer thickness so it is a very simple term from the term itself we can understand what it is it is the thickness of the boundary layer see in the previous slide you can see that the thickness of the boundary layer is slowly increasing so wh what do you mean by boundary layer thickness it is just the thickness of the boundary layer at a particular section taken so it is the distance from the boundary of the body measured perpendicular to the boundary of the body okay so if you are considering this section okay so this is the boundary of the body from this point to this point what is the thickness it is known as boundary layer thickness okay so fluid velocity is approximately equal to 0.99 times the free stream velocity u see, yeah, see this i told you that the velocity will be nearly equal to u okay so in other words it will be equal to 99.99 times the free stream velocity u at that particular point okay now so that is boundary layer thickness the next term is displacement thickness see due to the formation of this boundary layer or due to the introduction of solid body there is a reduction in the discharge if that boundary layer was not there the, 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 uh, there was if the boundary layer was not formed there will not be any reduction in the discharge so due to the formation of this boundary layer there is a reduction in discharge now we can compensate for this reduction if you displace the boundary okay if you just move the boundary then we can compensate this reduction so it is the distance perpendicular to the boundary of the solid solid body by which the boundary should be displaced to compensate for the reduction in discharge or rate of flow okay hope it is clear you have the solid body 
and due to the introduction of solid body boundary layer is formed and due to the formation of boundary layer here the velocity will be less isn't it so due to the formation of boundary layer there is a loss of discharge or reduction in discharge we can compensate for this reduction in discharge by moving this boundary this by moving this surface okay so what do you mean by displacement thickness it is the distance by which the boundary should be moved to compensate for the reduction in discharge okay and this uh, it is represented by delta star and this is the equation for delta star delta star is equal to integral 0 to delta 1 minus u by u dy okay so you should remember this equation you should memorize this now next term is momentum thickness i told you that due to the formation of boundary layer there is a reduction in discharge isn't it there is a reduction in momentum also due to the formation of boundary layer. So, in order to compensate the reduction in momentum, also we can we can compensate that by moving the surface. So, momentum thickness is the distance by which the boundary should be displaced to compensate the reduction in momentum. And so, this is the equation. This equation also should be memorized. Next term is energy thickness. So, it is very similar to the momentum and displacement thickness. Here, due to the formation of boundary layer, there is reduction in energy. In order to compensate that reduction, we can move the surface. So, energy thickness is the distance by which the boundary of the body should be moved so that we can compensate the reduction in kinetic energy. Okay, so the it is denoted by delta double star. So delta double star is equal to integral 0 to delta u by u into 1 minus u square by u square dy. Okay, so that is energy thickness. And there is one more term that is shape factor. Shape factor h is equal to delta star by delta. What is delta star? It is the displacement thickness. What is theta? Theta is the momentum thickness. Okay, so you can find out the shape factor also. So uh, we have discussed a few terms. All these terms are related to the boundary layer which is formed over a thin plate. Okay, so we have studied what is laminar boundary layer, what is turbulent boundary layer, and what is laminar sublayer what is transition zone what is laminar boundary layer thickness displacement thickness momentum thickness and energy thickness okay now we'll just consider or just discuss different characteristics of boundary layer growth over the thin plate okay <coughs> so first one is See, all these things are already discussed. We'll just point out what we have studied. Okay, first one boundary layer thickness increases as the distance from the leading edge increases. We have already seen that as we go away from the leading edge, the boundary will uh, boundary layer thickness is slowly increasing. Okay, next point greater the kinematic viscosity, greater will be the boundary layer thickness. So, if the fluid is having a higher kinematic viscosity the boundary layer thickness will also be more okay then third point boundary layer thickness is also affected by the pressure gradient in the direction of flow <coughs> so uh, this boundary layer thickness is affected by pressure graded in the direction of flow. So, if uh, what do you mean by pressure gradient? The change in pressure with respect to the direction of flow. So, if the flow is taking place in the x direction, dou P by dou X can be represented as the pressure gradient. So, if the pressure gradient is negative, that is less than 0, it retards the growth of 
boundary layer and if it is positive that is if dou p by dou x is greater than 0 it assists in the thickening of boundary layer the thickness of boundary layer will be more if the pressure gradient is positive okay so these are the characteristics of boundary layer growth over thin long plate now uh, next equation that we are going to study is momentum integral equation of boundary layer it is given by tau naught by rho u square is equal to dou theta by dou x so hope all the terms are uh, known to you this tau naught is the shear stress near to this boundary of the body okay at the boundary you will have a shear stress which is acting opposite to the direction of fluid flow. That shear stress is known as tau naught. Okay. Rho is the property of fluid. U is the free stream velocity. And X is the, the, the distance in the direction of flow. Theta you already know. Okay. So this is a very important equation. It is known as momentum integral equation of boundary layer. You need to memorize this equation. Then you have drag force i told you that there is shear force near to the surface of the solid body and due to shear this force due to the stress we can expect a drag force which is acting opposite to the direction of fluid flow so it retards fluid flow and it is represented by fd it is given by it can be found out using the equation integral 0 to l tau naught into b into dx See, L is the length of the flat plate. Here you have the plate and the fluid is flowing in this direction. Okay. So, this is the length of the flat plate. So, in this equation, L is nothing but this length. Now, if you look from the top, from this side, if you see, the plan of the flat plate will be something like this, isn't it? So, this distance is L and this length can be taken as B. Okay, so this is the width of the plate. So, in this equation, B is the width of the plate. Tau naught is the shear stress at the surface. So, here you will have tau naught. Okay. This is the shear stress at the surface. So, from this equation, you can find out the drag force. And there is one more term that is coefficient of drag, Cd. Cd is given by Fd by 1 by 2 rho A u square, where A is the area of the plate and Fd is the drag force. Okay. So, these are the equations that you should memorize. So, with that, we'll wind up this video. In the coming videos, we'll be discussing the Blaise's boundary layer equations, forces on immersed bodies, separation of boundary layer and its control, and then we'll be discussing six different types of problems in module six. Thank you.